today we're going to talk about some very important information that is on your ball band. We're going to be using Woolies by Lion Brand as our example today. So on your label, you'll find information that will be important to use for the pattern you're creating. This will tell you the weight or thickness of the yarn, what the yarn is made of, how many yards are in there, and some other great information. So when we look at a ball band, we wanna check what is the weight of the yarn. Now you may see this written differently depending on if you're getting a commercial yarn or an independently dyed yarn. Commercial yarn in the store tends to run on a number system here, and you'll see this is four or medium, which means this is a worsted weight yarn. If you're buying an indie yarn, you might see something else besides a number. It might say that it is a fingering weight, a DK weight, a bulky weight. They don't necessarily use the number system here. Uh, but a four medium is a worsted weight yarn. We'll also see information about how much yarn is in this ball. This will be true whether it's an indie yarn or a commercial yarn. We can see here that this is a three ounce um, ball of yarn, 85 grams, and it has 197 yards or 180 meters in this ball of yarn. The next important bit of information is what is the yarn made of? What is the consistency of the yarn, the fiber? Here we're gonna see it's an 80% acrylic and 20% wool, or an 80-20 blend. Now, if you have a independently dyed ball of yarn, it normally will not include the washing information on there, but here we can see it it tells us this is machine washable and dryable. It gives us temperatures um, and it has all of these different symbols here, which relate to fabric care. Um, so we can see that this is machine washable. You can wash it in warm water. It says 104 degrees, 40 degrees Celsius. Um, this can go in the dryer, uh, but we don't wanna iron this yarn because of that acrylic content in there. If we tried to iron this yarn, we would melt the yarn. <laughs> um, and the yarn will tell us the color name. And it will also, if it's from a commercial dyer where they're dyeing in large batches, it will tell us also the dye lot. This is really important. Let's see, we got some hair, hence furry knitter. <laughs> the dye lots become important if you are making a garment, a blanket, a piece that you're going to be using multiple balls of yarn for. You're going to try and match your dye lots um, so that you have the same color consistency from the dye pots in your piece. If you're getting from an independent dyer, they often are dyeing in small batches, so the dye lots aren't necessarily going to be listed on there because it may be a one-off, they aren't producing it on a commercial level. Other great information that you'll see on commercial ball bands and sometimes on indie ball bands is it will tell you suggested needle sizes and hook sizes to use, as well as how many stitches per inch you can expect from this yarn. But as we talk about in our gauge video, your gauge may be different from what's listed on this ball band. It all depends on the tension that you use. I know for myself, I tend to have to go down hook sizes from the recommended size, but this is a great starting point to know. So you can try working with that first, or if you have a pattern that calls for a certain number of stitches per inch, you can see, you know, would this yarn necessarily work for the project that I am going to make? So that is how to read a ball band and tell the information that's on here so that you can make a smart choice for your project.